and welcome to Squash for Beginners, episode 11. In this video, I'm going to remind you to use the correct grip, insist that you watch the ball hit your strings, warn you not to hit the ball too hard, and advise you to keep your distance. And then I'm going to explain the fundamentals of both the forehand and the backhand swing followed by showing you three primary solo drill exercises that will improve your control. And finally, I'm going to introduce you to my new coaching assistant. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's start with some basic hitting advice. One of the biggest misconceptions about squash is that it's a wristy, flicky sport. It's not. Now's not the time and place to talk about it, but trust me, don't flick your wrist. The number of times I've seen new players use the wrong ball is OMG. Too often I hear beginners say WTP are all the different colours and dots. Watch my full video about squash balls for more details, but for now you should simply FMA and use a red dot. If you can take your eyes off my sexy knees for just one second, you'll notice I'm wearing squash goggles. Squash is not a dangerous sport, but the benefit of wearing those goggles compared to the slight discomfort is well worth it. Please wear squash goggles. Getting the grip right now will save you a lot of trouble later on. Holding the racket like this will allow you to hit the ball with control and power as well as helping get the ball out of the corners. This is what it will look like for left-handers. Please watch my grip video for more details. It's episode number nine. The first habit to develop is watching the ball hit your strings. It's possibly the most important coaching advice ever used in racket sports. It may seem difficult or strange at first, but keep practicing it. Notice how I keep my head still as I make contact with the ball. Now, watch again. This time, notice how I keep my head still for a fraction of a second after I make contact with the ball and then look up. This is what most people do. They look up before they've made contact with the ball. Don't do that. Next, don't try to hit the ball hard. I know it feels great when you do, but until you can control the ball, hitting hard won't bring you many benefits, and in fact, may cause you problems. For example, the ball may come back at you. Judging the correct distance from the ball is an important skill. As a beginner, you may focus on the speed and height of the bounce and forget to consider how far away the ball is from you. If it is too close to you, then you have no room to swing or adjust. If it is too far away from you, you don't have the ability to hit the ball with control and you will lack balance. The final element to talk about in the basic hitting section is the height you make contact with the ball. Ideally, you should be trying to hit the ball when it is about the height of your knee. This is only a guide though, and obviously during real points, that's not always possible or desirable. When you first start hitting the ball, you will probably not be able to hit the ball consistently, so you will have to adjust your position. This is one of the benefits of hitting the ball alone. It gives you plenty of practice in learning to be in the right place at the right time. So, if you find yourself moving around a lot during the solo drills, don't worry. It's all part of the process of improving. Let's look at the fundamentals of the swing now. I'm not going to be describing the perfect swing in detail. All I want you to learn in the next few minutes is a short controlled swing that will allow you to control the ball, play safely, and provide the foundation for a proper squash swing sometime in the future. I'm going to start with the backhand, as that is the one that most new players have the most trouble with. Remember, you are not bending or flicking your wrist. You want to keep your wrist firm with your elbow bent. The racket can start low, for now, and swing towards the ball in an upward motion. Make contact in front of the knee. After you have hit the ball, the racket head should be about the height of your shoulder. Notice that it does not swing wildly. 
try to remain in control of the racket at all times. Your left hand and arm is key in swinging well on the backhand. Many new players have their left arm in the way and it stops the right arm from swinging properly. Keep your left arm under the racket. If this proves difficult, actually place your left arm behind your back. This is a temporary measure to demonstrate how much better you can hit the ball when your left arm is not hindering your swing. A progression of this is to place your left arm high and away from you. This will ensure your racket starts low and swings in an upward motion. To summarize, bent elbow on preparation, firm wrist all through the swing and controlled follow through at the end. Moving on to the forehand. The same key points from the backhand apply to the forehand. They are short, low, forward swing. Firm wrist and controlled follow through. Please notice how short my swing is. With a firm wrist and contact in the center of the racket head, you don't need a big swing to hit the ball cleanly. Don't forget my warning from earlier about developing control before power, so don't try and hit the ball too hard. It's almost impossible to hit the ball on the backhand with a straight arm, but on the forehand, it's not only possible, but may seem like the best way. It's not, especially when you need to get the ball out of the back corners. Keep your elbows slightly bent and follow the ball with your racket head. Try to make contact behind the line of the knee. By becoming accustomed to having a slightly bent elbow on your forehand preparation, you will be creating the basis of a bigger but compact proper forehand swing. Now you have a better understanding of the fundamentals of the squash swing, it's time to practice. Spending time on court alone is not necessary, but it will allow you to progress faster. Hitting the ball back to yourself requires more ball control than hitting to a playing partner, so don't think it's the easier option. This video is just the starter drills, with some progressions. I'll be producing a video about practicing with a partner in a future Squash for Beginners video. By the way, a drill refers to a single shot or combination of shots used to practice a particular skill or tactic. Remember, make sure you are using a blue or red dot ball. You need a ball that bounces when it's at room temperature. Look at the difference in bounce between a red dot and a single yellow. I've created a full video about squash balls, which you should watch if you are unsure about what the colors and number of the dots mean. It's episode number seven. I've been using a red dot in all the previous demonstrations in this video and will continue to use it for the drills you're about to see. When you feel that a red dot ball is too bouncy, then you can progress to a single yellow dot. Until then, keep using the red dot. Standing near the short line, that's the line that goes across the court, hit the ball back to yourself. Aim to hit the service line, that's the line on the front wall. Your objective is to hit the ball at the same speed and height consistently. If continuous hitting is difficult for you, try hitting one shot and then catching the return. Throw the ball up, let it bounce and then hit it and so on. Try to hit 10 shots without any mistakes and without having to move too much. Once you can do that, try 20. Now try the backhand. Most people find the backhand harder, so don't worry if that's true for you. Don't forget to keep your left hand out of the way, maybe even putting it behind your back. Progression A. When you can do 20 with no mistakes, it's time to add a target. Place a sheet of paper on the floor and aim to hit it. Progression B. If you're having fun and able to hit at least 20 without a mistake, it's now time to switch between forehand and backhand. Again, aim for consistency. Progression C. Now hit one shot back to the same side and then one to the other side. Progression D is switching between forehand and backhand and using a sheet of paper as target for both sides. 
Can you hit one forehand and one backhand target consecutively? Now it's time for drill number two. Drill number one was all about controlling the ball while moving very little. Drill number two is about controlling the ball while moving. A key ability in squash is being able to adjust the height and the speed at which you hit the ball to control where the ball bounces. Start by standing near to the front wall and hit the ball back to yourself. Each time hit the ball a little higher and a little harder so that you have to move backwards towards the back wall. Do it in small gradual steps. It's not a race to see who can reach the back wall first. Keep watching the ball hit your strings and stay away from the side wall. If you need to, do it nearer the middle of the court. Being able to hit the ball when it is close to the side wall is a useful skill, but for now it's more important to get practice in being able to hit the ball high and deep. When you get near the back wall, hit the ball a little softer and lower to move forward again. Don't worry about getting the ball out of the corners yet. You'll need a proper swing for that. I've no progressions for this drill except the idea of keeping the ball close to the side wall. Drill number three. Assuming you're right-handed, start with your back near the left-hand side wall and hit forehands. Keep your swing short and controlled. Then hit the ball so that you have to walk forward a little to reach it. Do this until you are near the right-hand side wall. Then hit the ball so that it comes back towards you and you have to move backwards. You make the ball travel away from you by making contact with the ball just slightly behind where you would hit a straight drive. This position will ensure the ball goes away from you. It takes practice to get the timing right, but that's exactly why we're here, right? Just like drill two, it's not a race to see how quickly you can get to the other side wall. Slow and controlled is much better than fast and wild. To make the ball come back at you or even a little behind you, you need to make contact with it just in front of where a straight shot would be. The difference is quite small, but very important. Do the same on your backhand. To be honest, as long as you're enjoying yourself and feel that you're not too tired, do all these drills for as long as you want. Let's put this into context. Allow me to introduce you to my new coaching assistant. I will use them occasionally to help demonstrate certain aspects of the points I'm making. Imagine yourself in this situation. Your opponent hits the ball here and is standing here. Then suddenly they fall over. No, that's not quite right. Let's try that again. Imagine you find yourself in this situation. Your opponent has hit the ball here and is standing here. A great place to hit it would be into the front corner, but until you develop a little more control of the ball, you may need to hit it somewhere else. Well, a great place is the right hand back corner. To do this, you'll need to hit the ball away from yourself. Isn't that exactly what we've been practicing? You ask yourself. Yes, yes it was. Now imagine this situation. Your opponent has hit the ball here and is standing here. By making contact with the ball a little in front of yourself, you hit the ball into the left hand back corner. The ability to direct the ball straight, away from you or behind you is the foundation of each and every shot in squash. Now, get on court, start practicing and start improving. Shh, don't tell anyone. Oh, hey, so in the next few editions of Squash for Beginners, I'll be teaching you a little bit about the serve, how to play some rallies, and with the help of my good friend, we'll be talking about some basic rules to make sure you play safe. In fact, we haven't given this person a name, so why don't you suggest something in the comments, and I'll choose the best one. And as always, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya. Really? You had to? Okay.